And this, uh, we're now uh, going to talk about Lost End Tribes. The Lost End Tribes are amongst Western nations. They are amongst Western peoples. According to, this is according to the Bible, according to rabbinical sources, uh, corroborated, confirmed by uh, historical researchers, archaeology, linguistics, and mythology, and nearly everything that is pertinent in some way or other has uh, given confirmatory proof that the Lost and Jobs are amongst Western peoples. And uh, this has been proven, has been shown, and every bit of evidence uh, coming together from different directions builds on the other, confirms the other, and uh, proves it. So uh, we said the Lost End Tribes are now amongst, are now amongst Western peoples, the nations of Finland, of Sweden, of Denmark, of Norway, of the Netherlands, of Belgium, of France, of Switzerland, of Denmark, Scotland, Wales and Ireland, and the offshoots overseas, and also scattered in various areas throughout the earth. That is where the Lost Term Tribes are, and we have proofs of it, from, as we said, from numerous sources. So today we'll begin, we'll begin by going through uh, some of the Biblical evidence. You may have heard this before, but there's new aspects to it. And this is the beginning of a whole series that we intend to give, which, uh, that has numerous ramifications and it's worth listening to. So first of all, we said that Lost and Tribes are amongst Western peoples, and this is shown by the Bible, and the Bible brings evidence from different fields of evidence, uh, from uh, geography, blessings, uh, relative situation, historical behavior, symbols, and so on. So we'll go through it according to the uh, geographical uh, indications that the Prophet spoke of concerning Lost and Tribes in the end times, especially in the end times. That we had, uh, originally we had 12 tribes, we had 12 tribes of Israel in the land of Israel, greater land of Israel. They occupied the land of Israel from the Nile to the Euphrates at various times. At one stage or other, so they had 12 tribes of Israel. These 12 tribes of Israel were divided into two of the, uh, when King Solomon died. Rehavam became the king over Judah, the southern section, and Yeravam, Yeravam became the king of the northern section. Incidentally, the sages say that Yeravam, even though he, he revealed himself as an evil person, a reprobate personality, he was also intellectually astute. He was, uh, when he could, uh, he's considered one of the greatest Talmudic scholars who ever lived. In, the, in terms of those times, according to the Bible and the Sanhedrin. He knew his business, he knew what was going on. He wasn't a simple person from out of nowhere. He was, uh, he was, he may have even foresaw what was about to take place and somehow they helped it along. At all events, he set up golden calves in uh, Dan and in Bethel in the northern area of Israel and he of course, the Israelites, his subjects from the northern ten tribes, to worship idols. And they did so. And then, after a century, more than a century, the Assyrians came down and conquered the northern kingdom and took all of them into exile. And in their places of exile, they became uh, independent to some degree or other. And then from there, they moved out. They moved onwards. They moved to the north and they moved to the west. Some of them moved across the sea by various paths. They all converged in western regions that we mentioned, including the British Isles. The British Isles is important because the British Isles was dominated by the tribes of Joseph and Ephraim and Manasseh. In other words, there were ten tribes who were exiled, and each one of them ended up more dominating the area, a certain area of its own. We have identified these areas. And uh, the tribes of Joseph, Ephraim, and Manasseh dominated the British Isles. From there they conquered, or didn't conquer, they colonized North America. And there too, 
the tribes of Joseph, Ephraim, and Manasseh were to become dominant. So they, the USA, and the Canada, and the other areas of the British Dominions, Australia, New Zealand, and so on, and also the British Isles, are the domains, are the areas of the tribes of Joseph, Ephraim, and Manasseh. And of the uh, biblical prophecy specifically refers to them, but not always. At all events, we have geographical indications. One of the geographical indications are that lost in tribes should be at the ends of the earth, at the geographical extremities. When you take the continental masses as a whole, the geographical extremities are considered the ends of the earth. Katsayar, it's ends of the earth. Have this in in uh, Isaiah 24, 16. For glorify the Lord in the dawning light, be all in that will be fires. The Celts and the British Isles, the so not Celts, but people of Celtic civilization in the British Isles, were known in ancient times for lighting fires on the hilltops, gigantic bonfires. And with these bonfires, they would manage to signal to communicate with people in the rest of the areas. And these fires go back to before the time of the Romans, to ancient times, and the traditions continued right up, up uh, until the time of the Armada or later. And even in the time of the Armada, uh, they used these, this system of communication with fires lit on the, on the hilltops to send messages to realize news of the of what was what was going on to each other. So these uh, fires were known as Beorim and, and Isaiah is calling upon them to light these fires in the isles, in the isles of the sea. From the ends of the earth we have heard songs glory to the righteous. So the ends of the earth are referred to here, connected to the lost ten tribes of Israel. And we have other verses in the Bible with a similar message in Isaiah 41, 8 to 9. But you, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen. The descendants of Abraham, my friend, the descendants of the forefather of the Israelite peoples, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were the forefathers of the Israelite nation. And here is God the Almighty speaking to them. The descendants of Abraham, my friend, you whom I have taken from the ends of the earth. In other words, he is saying that they are at the ends of the earth. And called you from his father's regions and said to you, You are my servant, I have chosen you, I have not cast you away. Again in Isaiah 43.6, I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep back. Bring my sons from afar. And my daughter is from the ends of the earth, Isaiah 43.6. Again in 49.6, Isaiah 49.6, it says it is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, tribes of Jacob. Jacob is another name for Israel. Jacob could also be pronounced as Yankel or as Jack, the Union Jack. Or Yankee is another shortened form of the term Yaakov. So we have Yankee, a nickname for Americans. And he calls them to reserve the preserved ones of Israel, that is the ten tribes, and give you as a light to the Gentiles. The ten tribes were destined to be a light to the Gentiles, a light to the nations, the non Israelite peoples, to guide them and to civilize them and to uplift them. And you should be my servant to the ends of the earth. Again, we have the expression ends of the earth. This is the geographical extremities. And if you look at them at the geographical extremities where we locate the lost ten tribes of Israel, you find they are the geographical extremities of the earth, Australia and New Zealand. They are the geographical extremities of the earth, so earth to the southeast. They have Israel in the north, uh, the state of Israel in the north, at the end of the Mediterranean Sea. After that, you have Scandinavia. And then you have the Netherlands, all that on the northwest point, the northwest coast of Europe. Then you have the British Isles. Then you have North America. All those areas are the ends of the earth. That is where the lost and tribes are to be found. Also, uh, we 
Isaiah refers and the Jeremiah Bible refer to the ten tribes as being in islands, in islands of the sea. It says, glorify the Lord in the dawning light, as we not mentioned in Isaiah 24.5, the name of the Lord God of Israel in the coastland said in, in the isles in Hebrew, in e am the isles of the sea. And it says, surely the coastland said is the isles, the islands, in Hebrew, Eam shall wait for me in the ships of Tarshish, shall come first, ships of Tarshish, meant ships plying the Atlantic Ocean. The nation Tom's had Tartesis. Tartesis was uh, close to the area of Gibraltar today, or the very edge of the Iberian Peninsula, or Spain. And that was an area where they had uh, many, uh, mineral resources, or silver, mainly or silver, but also other sources, tin and so on. And it also served as an emporium for trade with the British Isles, trade with Northern Europe, and trade with the Mediterranean. It was known as Tartesis, and Tartesis, the whole area became known as Tartesis. And the ships of Tarshish referred to ships flying in the area because Tarshish, Tartesis, and Tarshish are one of the same. One is Greek, the other is Hebrew, Phoenician. Tarshish is the name applied to the Atlantic Ocean. So ships flying the Atlantic Ocean shall bring the exiles of Israel back in the end times. See Isaiah 69. Again in Jeremiah 31, 9 to 10 we have, From my father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Ephraim is a name sometimes used to apply to all of the ten tribes. Joseph, was, Ephraim and Nashah was the head, were the head tribes of the ten tribes. And Ephraim especially, uh, played a dominant role amongst them. So, Ephraim may, according to the context, apply to all of the ten tribes. For well, I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the isles, in the islands afar off. Say, who has scattered his old gather him, and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. That is Jeremiah 31, 9 to 10. And uh, Jeremiah also talks about the north country, the ten tribes being in the north country. Behold, I will bring them from the north country. I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the ends of the earth. Thighs of the earth, among the blind and the lame, the, the ch women with labour, with child, and when the labours with child together, a great throng shall return there. In addition to that, other verses refer to the ten tribes being in the west, to the west of the land of Israel. See Isaiah 24, 14. Lift up their voice, they shall sing, see the majesty of the Lord. They shall cry aloud from the sea in Hebrew, Miyam, meaning from the west. Also, Menashe ben Israel. It was uh, in the 1600s. He was also a famous scholar. He located the ten tribes uh, in North America. Uh, and he used biblical verses. He thought that that was where they were in his time. But if you take his his exegesis, his interpretation of the scripture, and see his biblical proofs, and apply it to our times, because it does apply to the end times, and he made the mistake of thinking that the end times was in his time. This is a tendency we have in every generation, seems to think their time is the end times, and the end times don't come yet. But eventually they will come, and we're getting closer to it than we were yesterday at least. And it could be that we are in the end times, so this is referring to us and in, in effect taking that conclusion that it refers to North America and the Western Europe, so that proves the Austrian tribes have to be in that area. In a Western location. See Isaiah 24:14. again Isaiah 11:10. They shall walk after the Lord, they will roar like a lion when he roars, and his son shall come trembling from the West. Again in Isaiah 49, 12, Surely these shall come from afar, 
took these from the north and the west and these from the land of Sinim. Land of Sinim according to biblical codes and other indications is referring to Australia and New Zealand and there too we find the ten tribes. And it stands to reason because most people in that area are related to people in Northwest Europe, especially in the British Isles. So if the people in the British Isles and North America are from the Ten Tribes, so do they must be. The Bible refers to them in one place, uh, so it is logical that it would also mention them in another. And so it all fits together. We find again Jeremiah 3.18 In those days the house of Judah, the house of Judah meaning the Jewish people, shall walk with the house of Israel meaning the ten tribes. The house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel and they shall come together out of the land of the north and the land that I have given as an inheritance unto you. And later on Jeremiah also mentions uh, 31, 6 to 10 he has a, there's a long section connected with this he says there shall be a day when the watchmen will cry on Mount Ephraim, on Mount Ephraim, and saying, Rise, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. The ten tribes will return and reunite with Judah. Thus says the Lord, Sing with gladness with Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations, proclaim, give praise, and say, Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel, the meaning of the ten tribes, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, from the north country, north of the land of Israel, from the west, and gather them from the ends of the earth, as we mentioned. Among them the blind and the, and the lame, and <coughs> the woman with the child, and also the one who labors with child thither. Now this verse is this was, uh, when the Jews of the state of Israel brought people back from Ethiopia, so the, the people of, of Ethiopia they, they were saved actually with the help of America. America helped the, Jew, the state of Israel to bring the Jews of Ethiopia into the land of Israel. They had uh, already fled, they have been persecuted in Ethiopia, they were in danger, they, then they moved them to the Sudan, then to the conditions weren't the best, and they were in danger from the people around them. So uh, with America, American help, the Israelis put them on planes and flew them to the state of Israel. There were cases where women gave birth on the airplanes. And the women were in all different states. Uh, the women, the men, all of them, but they looked after reasonably well. And this, they quoted this verse. This verse was quoted. Among them the blind and the lame, the woman with the child, and the one who labors with child together. They will all return, they'll return together. A great throng shall return there, they shall come with weeping, and with supplications I will lead them, I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters, in a straight way in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear they have the word of the, of the Lord, O nations. Declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He gathered is Israel will gather him. He who is cut Israel will gather him, and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. We have Isaiah 41 8. It's talking about the lost ten tribes being in the, not only at the ends of the earth, but in the best places of the earth. And that is that is reality, the best places of the earth. Ends of the earth could mean Siberia. Siberia is also at the ends of the earth. Antarctica is at the ends of the earth. South America is at the ends of the earth. But we say, out of the ends of the earth, it's only in certain sections of them. And the Bible refers to these sections as ends of the earth and as they are the best of them. The places with the most salubrious climates. The, the, those areas are most conducive to human habitation. And even though sometimes in summer people in, in Australia might complain, but relatively speaking it's not that bad. And, uh, and so too, North America on the whole is built, is built for human habitation. It is uh, designed, designed to have a great empire created within it, have the Mississippi River dividing the USA in half, providing a network of, of canals, of waterworks, 
that enables the settlement of all of the interior of the country, linking up every single place by waterways, but the cheapest form of transport known by waterways, enabling the growth of wheat, the growth of soya according to the seasons all over the state, providing uh, the, the bulk, the bulk of the world's surplus of those crops. And it's just there for the taking, not just there for the taking, it needed uh, engineering, it needed uh, the application of industry, of thought, of full thought, of full thought of uh, investment, but nevertheless, uh, the basic, the basic needs, the basic structure, the was already there, already in place by the by God Almighty has already so designed it that this should come into the hands of the sons of Joseph. And it says in, uh, in uh, Isaiah 41, 8-9, But you, Israel, my, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the descendants of Abraham, my friend, who I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called from his farthest regions, the word translated as farthest regions in Hebrew is Atalaya, meaning the best places of the ends of the earth said to you, you are my servant, I have chosen you, I have not cast you away. Also we have a reference in Abijah, the book of Abijah, in the Minor Prophets, Abijah 1, 20. Abijah says, and the captives shall be sold to the children of Israel, shall possess the land of the Canaanites, as far as Zarephath, Zarephath, the captives of Jerusalem who are in Sepharad, shall possess the cities of the south. So what does this mean? According to the commentators, to the rabbinical commentators, the land of the Canaanites at Zafaroth means the land of France, which is known as Zarephath. And it is referring to the lost ten tribes. In the Hebrew, it's more evident, it's more obvious than in English translations. For instance, the English translation says, "And the captives of this host of the children of Israel, the captives of this host of the children of Israel, according to the simple Hebrew, may also be translated as the cap this first captivity, this first captivity of the children of Israel shall possess the land of the Canaanites as far as Zarephath. And what does that mean? This first captivity, according to the the first captivity was the captivity of, of the Lost Ten Tribes. Rashi says that. All of the great commentators say that. But if, because what happened, first the Lost Ten Tribes were taken away by the Assyrians. That was the first captivity, and from there they were lost, scattered. This, uh, whereas Judah, the people of Judah remained, and uh, some time later they too were captured by the Babylonians and taken away into captivity to Babylonia. But they returned after 70 years. So the Jews returned, but the lost ten tribes did not. So that this lost first captivity, which is in Zarephath, meaning France, according to Rashi, according to the, the traditions, it means France, according to uh, Abavanel, it means France and England together. France and England together, remember that equal refers to England, the island of England, meaning the British Isles together. So I felt according to Nahmanides, who lived about in the same uh, Middle Age area, era of the others, he, uh, he says it means the, the far north, that is, north of France, the Netherlands, Scandinavia, or that area. So they're referring to the same general area in the north where we lost, where we said those ten tribes are to be found. And the, the book of Abijah is saying that expressly, according to the rabbinical commentators, they are expressly referring to the lost ten tribes being in those regions. We cannot say that often enough, and we've been saying this for years and repeating it over and over again. And no one has ever challenged us on this point. They may not, uh, they may have tried to ignore us, whatever. But no one has ever said that our interpretation of this passage is mistaken. And a lot of them have heard it. 